On September 30th, we're going to begin our Disciple Fast Track Bible Study for Busy Lives into the New Testament. It's going to be offered at two times via Zoom meeting at noon, from noon to 1, and then in the evening from 6.30 to 7.30. Now, in this first meeting on the 30th, this will be an introductory meeting to the program itself, so we'll probably only be meeting for 15 to 20 minutes. But then we will begin with the regular study every Wednesday thereafter at those two times. If you're interested in participating in the Disciple Fast Track study into the New Testament, we need to hear from you very shortly. We have a couple of books available here at the church. If you have not been able to acquire a book and would like one, we can make that available to you. Uh, they are $12 each, but we really would like to know for sure all of those who are going to participate. Now, many have already informed me they are, and we're glad to have so many of you, but anyone else, please let us know as soon as you're able so we can plan for the you. This is Pastor David Lystra welcoming you to a time of worship here at Sturgeon Bay United Methodist Church. We're so glad you chose to join us today as we gather together in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to celebrate our faith, to worship our Lord and God, and to just be together in this way as Christian disciples. Just a couple of announcements I would remind you of that Jacksonport United Methodist Church continues with its 8.30 outdoor services on these Sundays of September. Uh, we're going to do so as long as the weather permits and perhaps into the first couple Sundays of October as well, but that again, weather permitting. We're continuing to uh, hold our other services in a virtual way, as are our Bible studies and meetings and so forth during this time of pandemic. Uh, and we were hoping that perhaps we might be able to do something special in the church for World Communion Sunday, that's not possible now, but we still are planning to still do something special. We'll just be doing it together in this way with you in your homes. So we look forward to that. So uh, when that Sunday comes, the first Sunday of October, please plan to be ready with your communion elements by your side as we celebrate communion with folks all over the world. And now at this time, I'm gonna invite you, if you would like to, to uh, turn your attention to the screen where we're going to be singing our opening song, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. Will you pray with me? Mighty and loving God, we come together in this way. In the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we come together as those who are committed, committed to living life after the example of and in the teachings of 
our Lord Jesus Christ, those who have sought out our Lord to show us the way in these days in which we live and in the days that are to follow. We pray, Almighty God, you will guide us, and we pray that you will bless us in this time of worship as we share together these days before you, and with your grace we pray in ways that bring honor to your name. We ask your, time, your blessing on our time in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. this time, let us pray. Mighty and loving God, we are so grateful for the love you show us each and every day. We're grateful for those who are working in this world to help us to, to stay together, to stay close. All throughout the world, Christian people are doing their best, Lord, to stay in relationship with their churches and with each other, and especially with you through your much beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. Bless, O oh Lord, the gifts that this church receives. Bless them for their use so that we might live as true disciples of your son Jesus, not only in how we, we worship, but in how we live, how we treat each other, how we experience life. Help us to know the joys of discipleship. So we pray your blessing on these gifts that they may be used in such a way that brings honor to you and helps us to grow closer to you in faith. In Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And now, time with the children. But I brought you a calendar to show you. It's September 20th, not December 24th. And here you are, all decked out for Christmas. You bet I am. Why? Because it's time to start thinking about the Samaritan's Purse Christmas Child um, shoe boxes. Oh, the shoe box already? Yes, already. We sh yes, of course. Well, yeah, I guess we have to get them together in time to deliver them, what, in, in November, That's early November? That's right, the week of Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is soon, I guess. Yes, it is. So we got to get the people going and, fig and getting their boxes filled. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, I'm going to set the boxes out in front okay. where you come in the first doors. I'm sure. going to set some there, and they can pick up their box. Okay. And if they can't fill a box or they don't feel they want to to go into the stores, they can send a donation to the church and I'll fill the box for them. Oh, okay. Well, and there's all, is there things there though, though if they and, do want? If they and I will them? put out all the information, okay. which is the shoe, how to pack your shoe box, and also a paper that will be telling you suggestions of what age you want to pick and what can go in the shoe box. Okay, so if they wanted you to buy for them and fill them, they could fill one of those out for you, so you know what to do. That's right. Well, okay. there you go. Well, that sounds pretty good. So, well, we'll get we'll get all this since we got to hurry now. It looks like we I mean, do. Otherwise, Jingle you're gonna bells. get you're gonna get pretty warm wearing that hat if we don't do something soon here. So, well, I we'll, got my shorts on. Well, too. that's See, true. I'm, yeah. I'm okay. double uh, okay. season here. All right. Well, <laughs> so we can get this going, and so what we'll do then is we'll get information out um, on emails and other ways. A newsletter and newsletters, so people know about this and they start thinking Christmas. That's right. Well, to help them along the way and to help our young folks think Christmas too, I'm going to read to you a story from our Bible, our children's Bible here called Hallelujah, and it's taken from Luke 2, 1 through 20, and I'll read this quickly, and we'll be talking about this story, oh boy, will we be talking about this story when we get into December, but listen now, and as we consider the importance of making Christmas a little brighter for children around the world. That's right. So here's how it reads, Joseph gently lifted Mary onto the donkey's back, and their journey began. The Roman emperor picked a bad time to make us go to our hometowns, 
Joseph complained. Yes, agreed Mary, but it's the law. He wants to count his citizens. The trip to Bethlehem was a hard journey for a woman about to have a baby. Late that night, they reached a little town. I'll find a room so you can rest, Joseph said. But every inn was, he, he tried was full of people. He knocked on door after door and got the same answer. Full, no more rooms. Try down the street. Mary was very tired, and Joseph was worried. He kept knocking and begging for a room. Please, we'll take any little corner, anything you have. My wife is about to have a baby. The last innkeeper felt sorry for the young couple. There's a stable in the back. It's small, dark, and with animals. It's not very clean. We'll take it. <laughs> Bet they would. Joseph made Mary as comfortable as he could in the damp little stable, and not a moment too soon, for that night her baby boy was born, just as the angel had said. They named the baby Jesus. Mary looked at her beautiful baby, remembering the angel's words, He will save the world. That same night, some shepherds were taking care of their sheep in a nearby field. An angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds with a glorious light shining all around. The shepherds had never seen such a thing, and they were scared. But the angel calmed them down, saying, Don't be afraid. I am bringing you good news that will be a joy to all the people. Today, your Savior was born in Bethlehem. This is how you will know him. He will be wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Then many angels appeared in the sky, singing and praising God for the wonderful gift of baby Jesus. They sang, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace and goodwill toward all men. The shepherds could hardly wait to meet the baby Savior, so they went straight to town looking for a baby lying in a manger. When they found Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, they knew the angels' words were true. Wow. And that, I love that story. And, and I can't wait till uh, we get to that season where maybe we have a little bit more Christmas about us, too. Uh, but but it's no never snow. too soon to start. No, nah, no snow. <laughs> never too soon to start. God's message is to us uh, this as they give it to us. Today my son has been born as a human. Like you, he will laugh and cry. Like you, he will know the love and comfort of family and friends. Like you, he will experience sadness and pain. Born to, to be your savior, he will live among you and bring you great joy. He will be your hope and your salvation. Now so, there's the greatest gift that we can have in the, the world. Greatest gift, and that's why we give gifts. That's and right. And why we share with others, because God shared with us his only son. That's yes, he that sure that did. Yep. And we need to share with those children who do don't don't get, have as don't much. have as much as yeah. we have. Right. So For sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's and something we can do. We can make their Christmas a little brighter. So. That's right. Well, listen, I'm going to I'm gonna go find my hat because I got one like that. Mine's red. Oh. And, and so I can help out here and put this together because I'm feeling a little left out right oh. now. So, so next time, <laughs> boys and girls, bye-bye. Bye-bye. And remember, Christmas in September, it's time to start being ready to, to share a Christmas with others. That's right. Take care now. Bye-bye. I'm getting my hat. Well, I'll have the reading of Scripture. Our scripture today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About the third hour, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did the same thing. About the eleventh hour, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about the eleventh hour came, and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These men who were hired last worked only one hour. They said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, friend, I am not being unfair to you. 
Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. And now join us in a couple worship choruses. These last few weeks, we've been looking at the teachings of Jesus as we have found them in the Gospel of Matthew. This whole section deals with a period of time when Jesus was heading south towards Jerusalem and was traveling on the far side of the Jordan, avoiding Samaria. They were taking the traditional travel route that Jewish people did when going from north to south. And he's been teaching them various things. Now, we've been looking at the concept of reconciliation two Sundays ago, about the idea that the goal of our lives should be to hold our relationships close and where reconciliation is needed, that we work to see that reconciliation uh, rec uh, to see that, that relationship restored, where that's possible. And then we looked at the concepts about forgiveness and recognized that 
In forgiveness, reconciliation plays a role, but so does accountability. This Sunday, we look at a really unusual parable that describes something about the generosity and grace of God. But in order for people to understand how God's kingdom works, how forgiveness and reconciliation and accountability works in the kingdom of God, he needed to explain, Jesus felt, I think, that, that he needed to show the people how God forgives and how God treats each of his children and how we ought to consider one another. So this parable is an interesting one. It's one that everyone in their day could identify with because the vast majority of those people that lived in that time were day workers. They would work for the day and for the day's wages. And it was very common for those who were landowners that when the time came where they needed extra people that they would go to the town square and hire those individuals waiting for work. Now we're told that this landowner goes early in the morning and finds those individuals already there, ready to go to work, and he hires them to work in his vineyard. They set to their work, and the landowner goes in later in the day and finds other individuals standing around, and he asks them, why aren't you working? They said, well, no one has hired us. He says, you come with me. I'll put you to work. And it goes like that till it gets right near the end of the work day. And he brings in workers, even then, those who had not found work. And he brings them into the vineyard. Well, the time to pay comes. And he instructs his, the person that works for him, that handles the pay, that he should line them up in accordance with the last who came to work in the vineyard as to be the first in the line to receive pay. And those who had began at the very beginning of the day to be the last to be paid. Unusual. Right there, people hearing this parable began to think, this doesn't sound right. And then he instructs his paymaster, I guess we could say, to pay the day's wage to those who'd only labored for an hour. Now, if you were standing behind them in line, and maybe you'd been there three, four, five, even eight hours, you're thinking, I'm going to really do well today. For if they get paid a whole day's wage for only an hour, how much then more would we be paid? But to much to their amazement, in the story as Jesus tells it, they too are paid the same, a day's wage. Even those who were first hired in the morning received the same pay as those who were hired in the last hour of the workday. Now, needless to say, they're grumbling about that. I think we probably all would. And again, those who are hearing this parable for the first time would be thinking, that's not fair. They should be paid their due. If they were paid that much, then those who worked so much harder, greater should be their reward. And Jesus has this parable, in this parable, has the landowner saying, is it not my right to pay in the accordance of my own desires? Is it not my right? You agreed to work for a day's wages. Have you been cheated? Were you shorted? No. But it is my right to show generosity and grace as I choose. Now this parable is telling us something about God. You see, it seems to me that we don't feel very comfortable letting God be God. We want God to be who we would be if we were God. We want God to be generous and loving and kind and forgiving, at least for our, us. Maybe not so much for others. We want God to be kind of understood and, and operate in the way that we think is fair that we think is with grace. But you see, we're not God. And what this parable is telling us is, is that we are most assuredly not in a position to judge God. 
We need to learn how to let God be God. And that's not easy sometimes, especially when things are difficult, when we have concerns in life, when we're worried, when the future feels uncertain. We want to lay out a way for God to go so that everything works out in the best way possible. But our ability to think about the future, our ability to know what is the right and good thing is very limited and often most focused on our own desires. But Jesus teaches us that it is God's right to be God and that we live in the best accord with God in our lives and our relationship with God when we trust God. You see, in letting God be God, it means we come to trust God. And the only way we can do that is just to take that risk, to accept that invitation, and to recognize what might not seem fair to us, might might not seem the right pathway for us. If we trust God, we know that what it is is what is best and most graceful for all. This was a hard parable for people to hear. Some have interpreted, and rightly so, I think, to to speak about what it means to come late to the party, you might say. What does it mean for those who have been Christian, perhaps, all of their lives, and they've always worked hard to be a good disciple of Christ, and someone comes to find the Lord, maybe in the last days of their life, and yet they are loved, and they receive the same grace, the same forgiveness, experience the same reconciliation as does the one who has labored all their lives. What does Jesus say to us? Let God be God. It's God's right. May we read the scriptures and consider what this means. May we read this one again and think about it and wonder about it, but celebrate this fact and this this is what I want to end with today. In this story, do you see the grace and the love and the acceptance that God shows? Can you celebrate that grace in your life, but surely in the lives of others? In Jesus' most holy name, amen. you sing with me now, count your blessings.
now may God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, my friends. May God walk with you. May God be with you in ways that you see and don't see. Listen, watch, and see, and see the love of God in your life. It's when you open your heart and your mind to that love that it becomes all the more apparent. Embrace that love and share that love. Go now in peace. In Jesus' most holy name, amen.